Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 4, Episode 9, Thoughts. This episode is called Broken Promises, another episode I love. Spoilers throughout this video for everything MCU leading up to and including this episode. Not for anything MCU that came out after this episode first premiered. Let's dive right in. So, yeah, from pretty early in this episode, it cuts to L. May D. And... Yeah, you know, throughout the episode, we keep watching her waiting, but yeah, by the end of the episode, it's clear, you know, playing the long game, they wanted to make sure, and it's it's true, like, if May had been revealed as an LMD in this episode, that would not have helped Radcliffe, so yeah, very, very clever, and yeah, they talk about they have to delete Ada's hard drive, and yeah, you know, Mace has a point. It's, you know, it is really not good that they have, that the, the, um, Darkhold is, yeah, on her hard drive, and that starts the running gag throughout the episode of Mac and later also Elena, you know, talking about how could they not see this coming, you know. So so let's see, at this point Mac says, haven't you watched, to, to Radcliffe, have you not watched a movie from the last 30 years? And later, you know, Elena says, "What haven't they watched movies from the 80s? And just, yeah, quite fun. And let's see, um, yeah, um, May is aiding Ada, and yeah, we see that you know when Nadir, the yeah, both Ellen and VJ, Nadir were younger and. The, the Chitori attacked that killed their mother on her birthday, which, yeah, that's gonna leave a mark emotionally. And... Yeah, I like Simmons and Daisy bonding, you know, so pretty difficult to breathe and with a hood over your head, huh? And I quite like Daisy comes in swinging when she gets called to, to mazes. And I also, you know, the Burroughs, here comes Smithers now. And the, the you know, he, yeah, he won't call her by the name she, she prefers and this whole thing. And, and yeah, you know, yeah, Daisy comes into mace and just immediately, you know, yeah, she's not, she's not here to make a friend. <laughs> And I, wow, he, very corny when he says, I know you're new here. And she's like, new here? You know, it's like, dude, she's been an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. for much longer than you have. You know, the, the, or was he? Certainly much longer than he's been director, you know. And, and, and yeah, I quite like her, her point about, you don't get to, play modest while, after you put up a glamour shot of yourself in your office. And <laughs> we get another instance of the, you know, a team that trusts. She's like, yeah, yeah, yeah I, I saw the motivational poster. And let's see. Yeah, we, I, I like that, um, yeah, so by the end of the episode, we realize this is all an act. But yeah, Radcliffe seemingly can't turn off Ada. And the thing, you know, she mentions, I've made some upgrades, you know, huh, upgrades. And yeah, the Nadine siblings discuss S.H.I.E.L.D. I, I quite like, it's a very, like, very credible, very, um authentic dynamic 
that they have. It feels like, because, like, at the end of the day, you know, these are two actors, and we actually don't get a huge amount of screen time that they, they share. But it feels like, okay, yeah, these two grew up together, you know. Like, the moment that, because we, it's not the first time we hear Ellen Adir go off about S.H.I.E.L.D., but, you know, VJ's like, come on, stop that. I know, you know, I know how this goes. I know exactly what you're going to say next, you know, because this is the kind of thing that, yeah, he knows. Ev evidently, this is how she, she gets. She's, what is it? He says, stop, you're always painting with, there you go again, painting with a broad brush. And, let's see. Right, um, yeah, I like when, when Mac says, this is not some Johnny Five that you've got running around, you know. The, the short circuit movies, which, yeah, like, if only, if only it was Johnny Five they were dealing with. And, yeah, I like, you know, Mace is like, I'm sorry I put a bag over your head. <laughs> and I appreciate that they don't have her say, that's okay, you know, because, no, it's not okay. That's, you know, it's maybe appreciated that he apologizes, but that's not, you know, they, they don't make group, they don't make Hallmark cards for that, and that's because you're not supposed to do that. That's a pretty regular, you know, that's, that's something we just accept. You know, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who would love to do it, but they appreciate... No, that's that's off-limits. Unless it's part of some, like, I'm not here to kink shame. Everybody can sense, that's, of course. But the, the yeah, I love Gemma point, posing as a lobbyist, and we get a little point about, yeah, you know, senators, elected politicians, and those in the running... They pretty much do what the lobbyists ask for, you know. Unfortunately, this guy recognizes Gemma. And... Let's see... The... Yeah, and throughout the episode, Ellen is, is certain that, you know, despite them being flesh and blood, they grew up together, they're all that... Both of them, yes, both of them is all the other has left of a family. You know, the 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 mother's dead, the father's. I, yeah, I'm pretty sure they mentioned the father also having died. Yes, yes, they say this was the last house dad designed before he died. So, yeah, you know, and yet she insists he is one of them now, and this is sadly there are extremists in real life, including politicians, who refuse to give an inch, even when it's their own flesh and blood, that is now a member of the minority that they hate. And, you know, she says something like, no brother of mine, you know, something, something. And... I believe it's also Mac who says, who refers to Ada as Radcliffe's weird science you know, something or other which yeah I mean you know, Radcliffe denies it but it that's kind of the vibe we, we get you know and it's still kind of wild to me not only that that movie actually got made that that someone thought oh yeah you know let's make a 94 minute movie about yeah John Hughes <laughs> Some sometimes he absolutely hit it out the park, and other times, like, my God, let's make a ninety-four movie minute movie about two teenage boys literally creating a woman to have sex with. <clears throat> but no, not only did they make a movie, they also made a TV show. Was that eighty-eight episodes? My God, just yeah. Um. Anyway, and, and, yeah, you know, he's like, that's not fair. We're just good friends. And, and Coulson's like, thank you for clarifying that. Because it's like, I, I don't think anybody in the room 
would have been like I, I'm pretty sure that just made it worse. That just made it sound like sure I've thought about it, but I don't want to ruin the friendship that she and I have. You know, it's just like Mac was just making a joke. You know, it was it, we're not actually you know wondering if you yeah, and <laughs> yeah, all the phones go off. This is exactly how Lawnmower Man ended. There now you don't have to watch that movie, and. Seriously though, that movie, my god, and it's it's just, and they made a sequel. I will almost definitely never actually rewatch and do a video on the sequel. I believe that Film Brain said everything that needs to be said about Lawnmower Man Two. Not planning on the first one either. Anyway, and yeah, Elena also knows about these movies, and Mac is like, this is what I'm talking about, you know. And, yeah, they talk about, you know, the book made Ada feel feelings. Although, I guess by the end of the episode, maybe that was just something Radcliffe claimed in order to, yeah. And, let's see. Yeah, and, the, yeah, uh, um, Radcliffe and, and Fitz talk about, you know, isn't she technically... A living being now you know she feels and thinks she has free will and this is of course this is a um, concept that has been explored in a lot of science fiction and it's yeah it's very interesting very compelling exploration as usual and so they may they make the first mention of two in this episode of the superior I'm really looking forward to finding out who that is because that is, yeah, you know, um, Daisy mentions she believes that the watchdogs are internationally funded. I'm guessing the superior is, yeah, the answer to that, to exactly who, the, yeah. And then Elena says, we should force Radcliffe to, you know, in, in return for this, you know, how could he, how could he do this? You know, he he should be forced to watch all the Terminator movies. And Mac is like, even Salvation? He deserves it. You know, just, yeah, that was that was quite fun. Um, I can't help but note that this episode aired after Genesis was released. So, does that mean that the... the the two of them, and I guess maybe also the writers of the episode, think that Salvation is worse than Genesis. I agree with that, but I know there's a lot of people who think that Genesis... You know, it's, it's one of those things where, after the second movie, people think that each of those movies just got worse and worse. You know, three is worse than two, the first two, four is worse than three, five is worse than four, and six is worse then five and let's see she did not just go all maximum overdrive on us yeah and yeah we see that Ada can see everything that the LMD of May sees including what Coulson says about where the the dark hold was hidden and then we see, you know, despite what appeared, VJ does indeed have inhuman powers. He is, he has super speed. And, yeah, um, Mac gets yet another satisfying use of the shotgun axe. The axe part of the shotgun axe. And, yeah, lops her head off, roll credits. Is that where... No, I'm pretty sure... CinemaSins was saying roll credits before January 10th of 2017, so I guess that he got it from somewhere else. Or came up with it himself. I guess it's not impossible that he could have come up with something on his own. And, yeah, VJ does agree to leave with Ellen, and she shoots him. So, that's how far her hatred extends, and... Yeah, 
it's that thing of, you know, super speed works if you can perceive a thing in time to use your, yeah, you know, theoretically, in reality, super speed doesn't exist, of course, but, you know, yeah, it's not that he, I, I yeah, I've seen some depictions of super speed where they just have, they, they can see things coming before they happen kind of thing, but it appears that he, yeah, he, he basically reacts. If someone in front of him is about to do something violent, he defends himself. He didn't know she had a gun. He really didn't think that she was going to shoot him, so he doesn't have time to react. <laughs> and Elena tries to, to think of a movie that Mac hasn't seen, but he has watched Chopping Mall, which... Yeah, sounds like fun. This is not the first time I've heard of it. Um, yeah, sounds like a very fun B-movie. At least now we know who our real enemy is. Yeah, famous last words. To Ada. To Ada. <laughs> very clever. Did not at all see that twist coming. And... Yeah, you know, Radcliffe talks about, you know, he's going to use May, the, the L May D, to get, yeah, to get him the Dark Hold. We all, you know, we'll all get what we want. And I'm not going to claim that I fully understand the last, like, we see. At the very, very end, we see VJ's body being dumped into water. And something happens with it. I'm not 100% certain, but it definitely wasn't what Ellen was expecting. Though she obviously doesn't know yet, but yeah. Looking forward to seeing what exactly... Yeah. Um, right, so some IMDb trivia for this episode. The music that Ada is playing to May at the beginning is the fourth movement of Gustav Mahler's Fifth Symphony. The piece was composed as a love letter to Mahler's wife. Despite this, it has been used for the soundtrack to Death in Venice and was also played at the funeral of John F. Kennedy. This episode served as the first second pod of episodes for the season, subtitled LMD. Mac and Elena were named as honorable mentions for TV Line's Performer of the Week, or the Actors, rather, from the Week for the Week of uh, January 9th, 2017, for their performances in this episode. The set praised the pair for their comedic performances, keeping the episode light and lively and marvelously meta. Absolutely agreed. And, right, and, and I watched the, the TV spot for this episode. Apparently, this is when the the um, slingshot episodes are are set and that does make much more sense than them being supposed to happen before the the season starts but yeah you know right around this point in this season makes good sense right um someone entered into the mtb goof section for this episode as a character error that Fitz says it seems unfair to Ada to erase her hard drive. You know, it, it says a true scientist would not become emotional regarding the treatment of a machine. This is one of many MDB goofs where it's like, nope, that's that's the point though. He's usually very, yeah, he's he's usually a good scientist. He usually does keep his emotions out of these kinds of but he has feelings for Ada. He feels some sympathy for her. That's what the, the line depicts. And... <laughs> right, I like Elena saying smart people are stupid, which is sadly true. Sometimes some of the smartest people can make really bad decisions. You know, I sometimes make very bad decisions. I'm not even smart. And let's see. Yeah, Mac pointing out the robots always attack. Right, and I like, <laughs> yeah. Um, 
I have to admit, Gemma is much tougher than I had originally given her credit for. Yeah, well, being in S.H.I.E.L.D. will do that too. I think Simmons has been kidnapped like three times since I've known her. Really? Yeah, well, only twice on this planet. And... Right, and yeah, Mac calls Ada Radcliffe's beautiful, weird science sex bot. And... Yeah, and, and also, <laughs> I always worried that robots would try and kill me one day. Really? We grew up different. And we got a special provision in my life insurance for death by robot. Are you serious? Yep, this goes sideways. My brother's going to be one rich dude. And, yeah, and, and Radcliffe is, you know, how's he going to manage that? Some sort of magic spell? Right, yeah, probably had your fill of dark arts jokes with, what with that flame-headed demon and all that. And see. Right, and also, yeah, um, Mac said, if we catch her, maybe I'm sure we'll get some crazy-ass Roy Batty explanation. Yeah. And... Let's see... That might be about... Yeah. Um, right, I like... Um, Mace says, you know, I don't want to chase conspiracy theories, and Daisy says, it's not a theory if I can prove it. How many times have we been locked up together? Hmm, hard to say. First time by a robot, though. 